Okay, the next one I want to talk about is selective color correction. Um, selective color correction is used for improving the color of images or altering the color of images. It's often used in narrow band images to make for more interesting palettes. Uh, I'll take the stars out while I'm talking. But it can also be used uh, for images like this, which was made with an Elkbot Enhance filter from Optolong and a one-shot color camera. And these remove light pollution or suppress light pollution. And in so doing, they also take out a little bit of the blue. So your nebula, although it really pops beautifully, it can end up with this sort of orangey hue. Now, if you go look on the internet and search for the color of hydrogen alpha or hydrogen alpha cathode ray tubes, you'll see that the color of H alpha is really more like bubble gum. That's kind of how I think of it. And the selective color correction script, which is in, it's in the toolbox where Graxpert lives. Jurgen Turpe did the toolbox. Um, so if you use the selective color correction script, oh, what am I trying to do? I put it here, but I can't actually open it from here. You have to open it from the script menu. And it's down here, selective color correction. And on my Mac, if I don't maximize, the text all gets squished. So let me maximize. Um, here's what here's what you would normally use this tool for. So uh, I'm going to have it select red. Uh, I'll show you what this does in a couple of minutes. And I'm going to probably uh, not cyan. I'm going to add add some magenta. Maybe that's too much. And maybe add a little bit of blue. There we go. And okay. So that that's done a pretty nice job correcting the color there. I can apply that. And uh, that's definitely a great use for that tool. So we went from we went from this sort of orangey hue to a nice more natural looking to me at least kind of bubblegummy hue uh, we could we could polish that up with curves but of course we're here to talk about masks so let me show you the power of this script for making masks again I have to open it from here this time I'm not going to pay attention at all to these sliders at all what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the mask. And you can see there's the red mask. And the balance is the way that I select more. The shadows is the way that I protect the background. And you can be, you can type in here as well. So you, you've got a lot of control. Um, you can also increase the balance or decrease the balance to get more selection and so on. Once you've got a mask that you're happy with, you just export it. And then pick a different channel. Now, the power of this tool is not just that it's easy to select red, green, or blue, but look at all of the things that you can select for. So for example, we could select just the shadows. And if I show the mouse, that's the shadows there. And again, I can make adjustments to that mask with these sliders. Um, maybe I just want to get a luminance mask. There it is. That mask can be blurred, more or less. So there is so much control within this mask-making tool. 
You can even create and use a star mask so that if you have stars, they won't get affected. So this is, a, again, an example of a tool that was not designed as a mask-making tool, but boy, does it ever do an amazing job.